Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to detail how to estimate the variance and standard deviation from a grouped frequency distribution. Let's just keep in mind that in a previous video, uh, we calculated from the group frequency distribution, we calculated the mean. Uh, and also in a video that was previous to that, we had a raw data set. And from the raw data set, we constructed the frequency distribution or the group frequency distribution. Uh, so if you need to go through the process for calculating or constructing a group frequency distribution, I would recommend having a look at one of the previous videos in this series. And also if you need to have a look at how to calculate the mean or the sample mean, I would recommend that you have a look at a previous video also in this series. So for this particular video, we're going to assume that we've calculated we're going to assume that we've calculated the sample mean for this particular group frequency distribution. Uh, and in the previous video, we calculated that the sample mean for this particular distribution was 43.25. And we're going to assume, we're going to round to the nearest whole number here. So we're going to assume that the sample mean is approximately equal to 43. Okay. So to calculate the variance, we have a formula to calculate the variance. Uh, and the variance formula looks something like this. The symbol for the sample variance is S squared. And to calculate the variance from a grouped frequency distribution, it's simply equal to the sum of the Fs, or the frequencies, times each observation minus the sample mean squared, divided by the sum of the frequencies minus 1. Okay, so let's just do this in stages. To calculate the variance, we need two numbers for this fraction. We need the numerator and we need the denominator. Well, we sort of already have the denominator for free. The sigma f or the sum of the f column is simply equal to 52. So 52 minus 1 is equal to 51. So we have half of this formula uh, already at this stage. So what we need to calculate it is the numerator. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate this in stages. We're first going to calculate what's inside the brackets. We're going to calculate x minus x bar. Okay? And that basically means that we're going to take for each x observation, okay, we're going to take away the mean. So it's going to be 11.5 minus 43, 24.5 minus 43, so on and so forth. And then what we'll do is we'll take them distances and we'll square them. So we'll have another column called x minus x bar squared. And they'll be the squared distances. And then finally what we'll do is we'll take each frequency and we multiply it by the squared distance to give us a new column called f times x minus x bar squared. And then we'll sum up this column to give us the sum of the frequencies times the x minus the x barred squared values. Okay, so let's do this calculation. So the first x minus x bar is going to be 11.5 minus 43, which gives us a value of minus 31.5. The next x minus x bar value is going to be the x value in this row, 24.5 minus the mean, which is 43, which gives us minus 18.5. Actually, at this stage, all we have to do is keep adding on the class interval, yeah, width, which is 13. Uh, but let's do it again. It's 37.5 minus 43 gives us a value of minus 5.5. The next value in here is the next x, which is 50.5. So it's 50, I'll just move this over here. It's 50.5 minus 43 gives us a value of 7.5. The next value is 63.5 minus 43 gives us a value of 20.5. The next value is 76.5 minus 43 gives us a value of 23. Okay, so now we've calculated the distance that each observation is away from the mean value. So now what we calculate next is the squared distance. So we take each observation or each value in the x minus x bar column and we square it. 
Now, just from a sanity perspective, we'll know that the square of any negative number is always going to be positive, and the square of any positive number is also going to be positive. So all the values in this column here will always be positive. So let's take our first value, which is 31.5, and square it. That gives us 992.25. The next value is 18.5 squared, gives us a value of 342.25. The next one is 5.5 squared, which is 330.25. The next one is 7.5 squared, is going to be 56.25. The next is 20.5 squared, is going to be 420.25. And the next value is 33.